Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is a morning market prep video for October 14th, 2020. Yesterday, we saw those bears doing a little bit of probing for weaknesses in the rally, breaking the four day rally, as we kind of had a mixed bag of earnings results. For the market to deal with so what does that mean for this morning well how about we grab ourselves something to drink settle into our office chairs and let's get ready for the hump day edition of the morning market prep video so this morning everyone we have had a little bit of back and forth going on in the futures early futures were pointing to a 100 point dow gap up and that has quickly reversed uh back down uh, BAC has reported and reported some disappointing results overall, and um, that has kind of pushed those futures back down. So right now we're looking at kind of a mixed bag of futures, and I would expect we'll continue to see some sensitivity to these earnings reports as they continue to roll out this morning. And this could reverse several times over the course of the morning. So let's uh, just kind of keep an eye on that. Right now, futures, Dow futures are only up seven points. Um, ES futures are actually negative on the morning. So uh, that's the S&P 500 futures, by the way. So kind of an interesting um, morning setting up here with just a little bit of uncertainty. And we still have the market in high hopes that we're going to get some kind of government stimulus uh, deficit spending package to come out. But so far, still nothing on that as talks between um, Nancy Pelosi and the White House don't seem to be going all that well. And Mitch McConnell on the Senate side is now suggesting he's planning to um, run a vote for some kind of a stimulus package. But as you know, it will be much smaller than what the, um, the House is hoping to achieve. And so uh, here we are again, just this um, political fight going on and the market stuck in the middle of that, uh, let alone um, the election um, uncertainty that we have out there continuing to um, crop up and create issues um, in those news reports that can affect you know, our overall market sentiment. So let's be careful on that. Uh, one of those issues, obviously, coronavirus that is starting to creep back up. And we may start to see our market become a little bit more sensitive to coronavirus news with the problems that we saw yesterday with some of the vaccine production um, or uh, tests moving forward. So we could see a little bit more sensitivity to news reports on that subject. So just really stay focused and flexible um, in this market because anything is possible. Now, one of the things I wrote about in the morning blog this morning is I, I studied a lot of charts last night. I really spent quite a bit of time looking at charts. And I feel as if I've seen this kind of price action before, this wild bullishness. And the last time I saw it was in 1989 in the tech uh, dot com um, run up in the market where we push stocks really way beyond um, logical um, logical levels in um, wild speculation of um, uh, well those dot com com companies well the things are much different here today but I think we're pushing the market up in this massively wild speculation on more stimulus that certainly can move the market. But let's keep in mind every time we do that, guys, we increase our national debt uh, tremendously. We are approaching a $30 trillion national debt. And it's remarkable to me that the majority of the market just wants more and more, keep spending government, keep pushing things in. I got to tell you, I think this ends in a pretty ugly way. Eventually, we can, the law of 
finance, we, we will not be able to escape forever. So just keep that in mind and, and remember that if, if we do get a stimulus package, that could be very, very good for all of those that are suffering right now under coronavirus, but it's not a sustainable thing. We cannot continue to to do that over and over and over as uh, this um, infection or this pandemic continues to cause massive disruptions in our economy. Eventually, we're going to see that kind of stall out. So be really, really careful. Now, what does that mean? Um, can, does that mean that we necessarily have to fall here in the market? No, it doesn't. As a matter of fact, I think there is still a remarkable possibility because we're throwing money at the market right now in hopes of this stimulus that we could actually break out and make new record highs in the market and push on higher. But let's keep in mind, the more we push, the more we extend this market, the more danger there is in the possible um, um, reversal. So please keep that in mind and trade accordingly. Make sure you're not um, um, over trading this market. So essentially what I'm saying and what I wrote in the blog, blog this morning, continue to follow the price action, but don't drink the Kool-Aid. Don't become overly... I'm convinced that the market will never sell off because believe me, it will. And we could see um, some pretty rough and painful times ahead of us um, if we continue to inflate the market the way we are. Let's take a look here at the technicals in the chart. Now, the Dow, definitely the bulls are um, holding on to control. There's just been this massive push to the upside um, in hopes of that um, coronavirus stimulus package. Um, notice that we are pushing into um, the all-time highs here in the Dow. And no reason to believe why we can't go up there and, and make new record highs um, with this kind of bullishness. We've we're certainly well above some support levels. Um, we've broken through these um, additional resistance levels. We don't have very far to go to set new record highs, and perhaps there just may be a massive effort. We want new record highs um, in this, no matter how dangerous that might be in the stretch that we have here in the market. So let's just watch that closely. The bears have begun to probe just a little bit on the uh, to the downside, they're looking for weaknesses. And with the mixed bag of earnings starting to come in, they may find some of those weaknesses to exploit. So be really, really careful. Make sure you're prepared just in case we swing lower in the market. If we take a look at our, our averages and things, we are still looking very, very bullish. The things that I w was worried about before we, we saw that 50-day moving average starting to flatten out and turn over, well, now that's turned up substantially. So we have quite a little support underneath this uh, market. If we do get some selling, um, we do have some port levels in here that could catch us. But just keep in mind, they could be pretty painful sell-offs just to get there because we have extended this so far so fast. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY also in that extended con condition in the short term, and those bears are probing here. They're, they're pushing here just to see if we can find some weaknesses um, in the market, pushing and pushing. Whether or not they'll be successful, I don't know. Keep in mind that we don't have that far to go to hit new record highs in the market and perhaps institutions, um, you know, wanting that headline to attract even more money to the market may put all of their efforts in in uh, behind this trying to make those new record highs to get that fear of missing out um, aspect coming into the market to try and drag as much money in as possible but remember there's danger in that as we push up so be careful and remember if you take trades make sure you carefully consider the risk of that reversal uh, making sure that you're buying stocks at or near price support, not at or near price resistance. Chasing, chasing a market higher can be very, very dangerous. If we take a look 
at the QQQ. QQQ also extremely strong. This is a really nicely well-formed inverted head and shoulders pattern, but we've already kind of played out the potential move in that head and shoulders pattern. And we're pushing up here into these highs. And once again, we are substantially extended. Um, even just following this trend would suggest that we have a potential for a pullback or several days of consolidation in that move. So in the short term, quite extended here. Um, let's watch for that as those bears are beginning to, to push around here a little bit, stir about, just be a little bit careful. And then in IWM, um, this has enjoyed an extremely nice rally to the upside, um, looking for those financials to um, help push us out. And we're pushing up here into some substantial resistance in the chart. If I pull this back and, and draw a line across here, we have substantial resistance in this area, substantial resistance in this area, and that travels back for quite a while in the chart. So kind of keep that in mind. We're testing that, that major resistance, wanting to make that breakout. But if we start to see some of these banks disappoint on earnings, like we saw this morning with Bank of America, that may put a little bit of struggle into the IWM here. So let's watch that closely, see um, how that performs forms with those bears starting to probe and just realizing that we are considerably extended a could be a substantial pullback just to test at the lo next level of support lower um, that could be kind of painful if you're chasing into trades at this point let's take a look at the vix interestingly enough yesterday um, even with the market the way it is we didn't get a massive response in the vix however i do think it's worth noting on here that the vix did bounce back above its 50-day moving average we had temporarily broke that we held it for a couple of days but yesterday that vix popped right back up in here and we're still remain in a very high vix um, elevated point when you consider the fact that we're trying to push out to new record highs in the market at a 26 handle vix I uh, can't say that I've ever seen that ever in my career, 30 years in the market. I don't believe I've ever seen that. So be careful with that. I'm not sure what that means, but I do believe it means that there is significant danger in chasing yield right here in this market. Let's take a look at um, uh, T2122. The T2122 indicator has been indicating that we are overbought for a period of time here. And as a matter of fact, we were so um, blatantly overbought there um, just a couple of days ago um, that I was expecting, um, uh, honestly, a little bit more downside probing um, by the bears. But we didn't get it yesterday. We got just this modest little rest in the market. Now, when I say modest rest, it, it seems amazing to me that a modest rest is 150 points in the Dow. But when we've pushed these kind of levels in the market, we could get these violent potential swings coming in. This morning, we've got futures kind of dancing around the flat line. They're trying to hold up here um, overall this morning. Now, this pullback here does open up the door for a, another surge to the upside. So that possibility exists that we could push on through. But don't be too terribly surprised if we continue to see a little bit of selling, um, dropping this down maybe into this area here before we get uh, you know that good opportunity to surge back higher. Watch that closely. A little bit of um, just overbought condition here in the market, creating a little trepidation, I think, on some of the some of the bulls. Let's take a look at um, our economic uh, calendar for today, and we do have a few things um, that we want to pay attention to. Not a big deal today, but we are going to get a PPI report looking for producer prices to decrease a little bit from a 0.2 excuse me from a 0.4 last um last reading to a 0.2 so producer prices maybe coming in a little bit but um you know showing an increase of 0.2 percent so keep an eye on that that comes out at 8 30. we also have a couple fed speakers and a treasury statement that won't matter nobody seems to care 
um, just exactly how much debt we add up now as long as we can keep the market moving higher. So that probably won't matter, but keep an eye on that PPI. And then remember, tomorrow, guys, we have that jobless claims number coming out. And we could easily start to see some of these uh, recent layoffs starting to creep into that number. So just keep that in mind. Prepare for that possibility tomorrow. Could also be very bullish. We could be hiring more folks than we're laying off. But let's watch that pretty closely. Um, could be a little bit sensitive to that news tomorrow. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be... Oh, I forgot. Let's take a look at some um, stocks that are reporting today and take a look. We do have several notable reports. I won't cover them all this morning because I am running out of time already, but we've got AA um, Alcoa that will be reporting today. Of course, I already mentioned BAC. BAC has disappointed and breaking down. And unfortunately, we're holding into this downtrending pattern here in BAC pushing lower this morning um, not a good sign um, Goldman Sachs however reported better than expected results perking up so we've got a little bit of a mixed bag here uh, coming in and this one is breaking that downtrend to the upside so any rest or pullback in here could set up an opportunity if it can hold some support in that chart keep an eye on that we also have uh, PNC Financial reporting this morning looks like um, it's trying to move higher but after a gap down so watch that close we will be hearing from wfc looks like they have disappointed this morning pushing lower and um usb um, will be reporting today and we also will hear from unh this might be an interesting report um unh united healthcare has been surging toward this earnings report um, uh, just really, really pushing hard. So let's keep an eye on this. We're a little bit overextended in the short term. Watch that closely um, as those earnings come out today. If you want a full list of the notable reports, please make sure you click that link just below the title of this video and you can go back to the morning blog uh, where I list all of those that may be notable, notable for today. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you would do me a favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click on that bell icon so that you'll be notified every time I post one of these videos. And please remember to, um, if you found these videos use, useful, click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment, and please always feel free to share this video with anyone out there that may have an interest in the market. And thanks for everyone for doing that. You guys are truly awesome. Never would have expected this many people um, would follow this kind of information you guys are truly awesome hey another thing i want to mention here really quickly i have a class coming up um, it's called the 38 trap class you can find some of the 38 trap videos on the youtube channel here i will provide a link it will be right underneath the link for the blog um, if you have an interest in that and would like to sign up um, there's not many spaces left. The members, um, right way options and hit run candlestick members have taken most of those spots. There's not many places left, but if you want to participate in that, please click that link, come check it out. Um, I have taught this to thousands of people now, and I got to tell you the results that people are receiving from the three, eight trap strategy, um, with a full set of rules. It's about a three hour class guys. I, I basically open up my entire trade book and give you everything I got. So if you have an interest in that, take a look, um, uh, click that link and follow through. You may find something there to be helpful. Let's take a look at a few stocks setting up. Remember, no recommendation to buy or sell any security in these stocks. Um, but and you need to make sure and do your own due diligence. Take a look at McDonald's. MCD has been holding up very, very well. And this consolidation in here continues to produce a really nice resting pattern here after breaking through that resistance. If the bullishness in the market maintains, we want to look for that opportunity as we move over here toward trend for that possibility of this popping out and extending 
um, that next leg higher. Same pattern here in NIO. And NIO is popping this morning. I've been waiting on this. I actually hold this trade. I've been waiting for this possible move. And this morning we're getting that gap and go here on that chart. There's that pattern again. Break on through, consolidate over to trend, pop. There's that next um, leg up potential in that chart. NIO looking good. Keep a close eye on that. Could be a nice little chart for today. Take a look at uh, Darden um, restaurants. Now this thing has started to slip a little bit and we could have a bit of a problem coming in on this, but if this can hold the trend and bounce right back up in here, still have that opportunity for that to push on through. But I gotta be honest, I am starting to get a little concerned with that lower high right in there that this may be that full on failure starting to come in Darden. So watch it close, could be both sides of of that chart um, could be setting up. So watch it carefully. Take a look at Walmart. Walmart, after breaking through these alerts that I've um, placed on these charts have worked out great. And Walmart uh, continuing to show strength here in the upside move. Now, keep in mind the Amazon Prime Day will be winding down or Prime Sale will be winding down. That will probably also um, have some effects here in Walmart. Walmart has been tagging along on that Prime event with their own sales event. Watch that closely. We could easily start to see a little rest or pullback in here. I wouldn't want to chase this being up four days in a row, possibly wait for the next entry into that trade. But I think Walmart does have a pretty good story moving forward and upside potential um, in that chart. A um, couple others that you might want to keep an eye on. Kohl's. Kohl's um, struggled um, in that last market sell-off, really broke down. But what I do like about this chart is that we broke back above that resistance in the chart and that downtrend. And now we're testing it as support. If we can get those buyers in there to hold on to Kohl's, we might have some upside move in there. And we're seeing good price moves in, in Target and lots of retail out there looking good. I also want to continue to mention um, uh, FedEx. Uh, FedEx has a big resistance out here that it's dealing with, but my goodness, uh, with everyone buying online, I think there's a good story here in our shippers. So keep an eye on FedEx and also UPS that has been in a nice Nice rally mode um, just climbing continuing to climb up so a few stocks for you to pay attention to to watch um, I want to wish everyone a fantastic day and guys be really careful out there as we head into the fall and these coronavirus numbers are kicking up be safe out there wear that mask um, do it in respect for the other person around you I know they're a pain I know no one likes to wear those silly things but um, it's just showing respect to the other people around you as we have to get out and continue um, life. Um, just be safe, all right? Be careful. We'll see you right back here bright and early Thursday morning. I want to wish you all a great day. Take care, everyone.